I get images and I get pictures and I get feelings and I get little movies played to me. I really do. I'm not a liar. I really, really, really do. In my opinion, he's fooling himself. He's fooling lots of other people. I would bet my house that he is not going to pass the Randy challenge. And I have to say, at the end of the day, I kind of felt pretty damn sorry for him. He's obviously taking it very hard. I know I'm real. And I know I'm not a bullshitter. And no matter what the result was, I know that I could um, continue with my life. A day later, the baby mind reader descends on Florida. The Sunshine State is a far cry from his hometown of Paisley. And in this land of opportunity, Derek is seeking his psychic pot of gold. He's here to take the plunge and attempt the James Randi Challenge, which promises $1 million to anyone who can prove they have psychic powers. Derek is confident he can land the prize. Next day, Derek faces his biggest challenge and greatest nemesis, the world's foremost and fearsome skeptic, James Randi. He's devoted his whole life to debunking psychics. And no psychic, however well known, escapes his tireless crusade to expose them as frauds. And it gets soft. So I say to it, bend, 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 and it bends. So confident is Randy that psychics don't exist, he's put up one million dollars of his own money as a reward to anybody who can prove they have psychic powers. But professional psychics haven't been lured by the bait. In fact, Derek is the first one ever to put himself in James Randi's firing line. I have been looking all over the world for someone who has psychic powers. Now, I don't expect to find any because my experience has always, in every case, been negative. The fact that I haven't found one doesn't mean that they don't exist. All it means is that I'm somewhat uh, biased against belief in psychics, and for that very good reason. There's no evidence to support it. To win the million dollars, Derek has to get a success rate of 60% in the test Randy has devised for him. It's the moment of truth as Derek meets the man all psychics have so far avoided. Hello, Mr. Randy. Hello. How are you? Mr. Ogilvy. It's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Well, thank you. Please call me Derek. Well, I'll do what I can. <laughs> First of all, uh, come with me if you would over to what we call the target area here. <clears throat> now these are uh, the ten toys that have been selected. One of them tends to get away on us. It's a okay. helium balloon. Can I just go through them? Yes, of course. Please do. The test will involve Derek having to identify which one of ten toys or objects a child will be holding at any one time. Well, that's a hand puppet. That's a hand puppet, yes. I want to see that. Yeah, it's okay. Derek will be in an adjacent soundproofed and blacked out room with only his telepathic connection providing a link to the child. With everything agreed, Derek is ready to take the challenge. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're going to do it. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Thank you for um, thank you for your time today. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's go. Come on. What's always exciting is after the tests fail and they invariably do. We listen to what the uh, the victim of this whole thing says. Uh, they look upon themselves as victims, and uh, they immediately complain that the latitude and longitude was wrong. It was a strange country. Atmospheric pressure was wrong. Uh, politics, whatever. There's always a reason why it didn't work. Intimidating here. I find it quite off-putting. I can understand they want to keep a distance from me, but. In a couple of occasions, I've said, "Please call me Derek," and everyone wants, what everyone wants to call me Mr. Ogilvy. And I'm not saying it's not unfriendly, but you know, it's a bit cold. So I'm feeling a little bit, you know. Well, it's difficult enough communicating with a child, but under these condi I didn't realise the conditions would be as not harsh, but as you know. What number is that? Okay. Put it in the back. Good please. for you. With Derek locked in his impenetrable room, the family, including two-year-old Makana, get ready to play their part. Each numbered ball corresponds with a toy or object, which is then picked from a box for Makana to play with. Ten. Ten. Okay, we'll shake them all up. We'll get 
Now everything rests on Derek's telepathic connection with a two-year-old. Okay, can we go to the test item one? Item one. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Derek knows he can get a connection with Makana. He chose him from ten possible children and has been practicing with him in the run-up to the challenge to ensure they're on the same wavelength. Listen to the music. Can we unplug them so we can put them on? Yes, music on. There we are. My dad's ready. My dad wear bubble five That's yes. what number five is. That's what number five is. The earphones. My dad so ready. Item two. Okay. Item two, Let's all right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> eight. You got number eight. Put it back in there. The rules of the challenge dictate each object is replaced after Derek has identified it. Item three. Oh. This means the odds of Derek identifying each object remains one in ten. But to get six out of ten, the odds rise to over six thousand to one. Three. With CCTV Three. cameras monitoring his every move, there is nowhere for Derek to escape in this ultimate test. Wow! With this. Oh, I think he does much better than Dad does. <laughs> And it's white, and this is a strap. All right, let me take okay. that back quickly. Guitar. He's rushing along here. All right. What number, please? Seven. Ten. 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 Okay. Ten. All right, number ten. This. While Makana is enjoying himself with the toys, Derek is getting increasingly tense. Is a million dollars slipping away, or is the connection strong? I don't know whether you can speak Yeah, what and is this, a piano? It has to be plugged into a piano. Oh, yeah. What would I call I'm this, a keyboard or a oh, piano? Oh, we're rushing this off right away. Next ball. One. Okay, Throw it in there. I'm going to tell you. And the last one, I think, ten. All right, okay. <laughs> Number nine. Nine, okay. Oh, that's a surprise. Look at this. Rad. Rum, rum, oh, rum, rum. Come on, let's go. You use a skateboard? The final toy takes the longest to establish a connection. But this skateboard may be the difference between winning or losing one million dollars. Dad's a Californian, so he knows about these things. Did you write your, uh, your entry down no, there? We're not supposed to do this. I kind of watch this I'm all the time. Quickly. Is that fun? Yeah. <laughs> We've got to get him his own skateboard now. I certainly hope so. Okay, have we finished? Yes, what is the date today? After just 20 minutes, the challenge concludes. That was tough. Okay. That was much? tough. I'll probably get none. <laughs> thank you very much, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Can I just time? say thank you for giving me the opportunity to meet with you? Oh, well. It's I really appreciate it. It was, sure it was a very, very tough challenge. I can realize why you've put up so much money for someone to win. Well, no, um, because... I find it very tough. I find it very tough. If, if you can do it, you can do it. And yeah. I'm willing to pay. Thank you very much. Oh. With one million dollars of his own money at stake, James Randi begins carefully calculating Derek's score. The aluminum case he guessed on number three, and it turned out to be the guitar. The headphones was his guess on number four, that was the suitcase. Six out of ten right, and Derek will become the million dollar mind reader. His answer for number seven, he said it was the bubble machine, and it was the keyboard. On number eight, Derek Ogilvy said that it would be the keyboard. It turned out to be the watch. And, as I expected, this is interesting, one of his answers, number ten, was skateboard and it was the skateboard. So one out of ten is what would be expected by chance alone. So either zero or one or two would have been well within expectation. And that's what we got. This man really is in firm belief that he really can talk to the children like this. I think he thinks that he can. But at the same time, he's also using gimmicks. And whether he recognizes that he's using gimmicks, this business of of reading the parents, actually, uh, reading their reaction. I don't know whether he's aware of that. So I can't say that he's a fraud or a fake. All I can say is he can't do 
what he says he can do.